Hey folks, Will Brink here, www.brinkzone.com. Uh, today I want to talk about sort of a, a hypothesis that I've had for a number of years uh, regarding different types of metabolism or different types of, I guess, genotype would really be the right uh, term. <clears throat> uh, you know, for a long time, people have tried to come up with various uh, genotypes of body types. That is, of course, like you've heard mesomorphs and endomorphs and that type of thing. And, you know, none of that has really worked out. What I'm going to talk about uh, is strictly observational on my part, uh, subjective based on experience and, you know, my science background and that type of thing. And, but understand that it's strictly observational, uh, maybe similar to my other video about how much muscle can someone gain naturally. So understanding that, uh, you'll have to work with, you know, my own hypothesis and whether you choose to uh, think it has value or relevance or not is up to you. But uh, no, it's not hard science. Uh, so given that, uh, over the years, you know, having worked with people and, and uh, again, uh, having a lot of experience with people's nutrition and, again, my own experience with, in research and uh, a lot of thought and a lot of stuff sort of comes together for what I'm going to tell you about what I have deemed or termed the anabolic versus catabolic metabolism. First, you have to understand, before we go any further with that, that bodybuilders and, and other strength athletes have sort of taken over the term anabolic uh, as their own. But you have to understand in physiology or biology that, that anabolic doesn't mean muscle. Anabolic just simply means, in layman's terms, building of tissue. And that, of course, is fat, muscle, connective tissue, organs, bone, etc. So that is really what the term anabolic means. So you've got to keep that in mind. And catabolic is really just the reverse of that. Again, you know, bodybuilders, in fact, have sort of grabbed onto the term catabolic. Uh, and when we, heard the t we hear the term catabolic, obviously we don't like it because we associate it uh, strictly with losing muscle, and that's not really true. Obviously, if you're in a catabolic state, muscle is probably going with it too, but that, that's another topic. But you understand what I'm saying. So you've got to keep in mind those two terms as they really mean in physiology and biology versus how uh, the strength community bodybuilders have grabbed onto it. So with that in mind, over the years I have come to feel that there are really two sort of primary genotypes. That is, like I say, the anabolic metabolism and the catabolic metabolism. And of course, there are extreme uh, examples of both of those, which I'm going to get into in a minute. And as you expect, you know, people tend to sort of fall towards one or the other. But I have found that generally speaking people tend to fall towards one or the other. To the extremes, yes, but for the most part, okay, so what is what is an anabolic metabolism? This is my this is my observation. The anabolic metabolism, let's say the, the, the classic one in my experience, uh, they tend to put on muscle really easily. They have no problem putting on muscle, but when it con comes time to getting lean, they have a lot of difficulty getting lean. Uh, they tend to have been probably overweight kids or they would be overweight if they didn't work out. Uh, they tend to, if they stop working out, they will gain weight. They'll get larger. Um, they tend to be able to tolerate a higher volume in their uh, programs and their workouts, I notice. Uh, they also tend to do better on lower carbs. In the my experience, it's around 30%. Um, carbs, but again, this depends on the diet you're following, but they tend to be able to function better uh, on lower carbs. That is your classic anabolic metabolism that I have seen. Your, so contrary on the other extreme is what I find would be your classic catabolic metabolism. Those are the types of people when they stop working out, they lose weight. Uh, they will lose weight, you know, start losing weight pretty quickly. They might hold on to, if they eat and they train and all that, they're holding on to an extra uh, let's say naturally 20, 30 pounds or whatever, and if they stop working out, they lose weight. They tend to be naturally pretty lean. Uh, when they diet, they have no problem losing fat. They tend to get lean really easily. Their problem, of course, is generally keeping onto muscle mass when they diet. <clears throat> they you know, are usually off-season lean. They tend to, uh, I notice, run better on higher carb intakes, uh, around 50%. Again, that's a wide variable depending on diets you follow and other things. Uh, I find they um, get the most out of lower volume uh, in their training and uh, will probably do better with lower volume training in terms of you know number of reps, number of days in the gym, that type of thing. So those are the, the sort of somatotype, genotype people. And how do you know, well again, how do you know if you're one of those, sort of classically speaking, 
you know, if you're the type of person who would normally, if you weren't lifting weights and hitting the aerobics, you'd be fat. And, and even, let's say even on the same calories as the classic catabolic metabolism, you'd tend to gain weight and they would tend to uh, lose weight, probably in the form of muscle. And th again, I find that people, maybe if they're not in those extremes, even towards the middle, tend to lean towards one type or the other. And again, you have to sort of find out where you fall with that. But this again, just my observation, but those are the, the genotype of people's uh, uh, metabolisms, body types that I have come to understand and sort of direct uh, their training, their nutrition, whatever, towards understanding that. Again, I know some people in the, on the total extremes of those that are always really uh, interesting uh, from a scientific perspective, maybe not in, that interesting to you. So that is my body type, how I tend to view body types. So what, what is the difference between these people genetically, uh, metabolically? Honestly, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, it would all be a, a <clears throat> it would be a guess. I mean, it might have to do with differences in insulin sensitivity, uh, various hormones, you know, all kinds of things, uh, enzyme difference. There's a lot that could you could go through that might make the difference between what is an inherently anabolic metabolism, someone who will, if they're not making muscle, they're making fat or something. They're always making something. Or the catabolic metabolism that, you know, if they, ha they have a difficult time putting on muscle, but they tend to be lean and they have no problem getting lean when they want to diet and so on. So that's my conversation uh, today. I uh, hope it's you found it useful. Maybe you uh, see yourself in some of this. Uh, please hit the like and the Twitter buttons, you know, beneath. And uh, see you all on the Brink Zone. Now, for more information on this topic, head on over to www.brinkzone.com, where you'll find my blog, more videos for reports on fat loss, muscle building supplementation, fitness, health, and longevity, as well as a ton of articles in my free weekly fitness newsletter. And I'll see you all on the Brink Zone.